Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. Thank you for your time, man. It's an absolute honor, man. Thank you for yours. It's always uh, humbling to be, you know, when people want to know about this stuff. So uh, thank right. you. Right. So you, you're you're uh, usually you're talking priest, but this time you're talking elegant weapon. So uh, give us a rundown on how that came to be. And I'm also curious on the name of the band because it's pretty cool sounding. Okay. Well, it came to be, I'm, I'm always writing. I'm always, you know, riffing, mm -hmm. um, writing melodies and ideas. And sometimes I think they're priest-like. Sometimes they're not. I, I'm a, you know, I like... Duran Duran and Flock of Seagulls and Ultravox and all that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm I'm doing everything right across the gamut, and some things I think are appropriate for priests, some things not. So um, I'm always putting together, you know, ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and when I think it was when COVID hit, that was when it kind of centered everything right. and made me think. Well, I've got some time now. Um, the priest record is pretty much written. Uh, obviously not recorded, but it's written. I don't have to do any more musical ideas for that. Um, so what about getting all these ideas together that I've written over the last few years and seeing if I've got songs, if I've got maybe an EP or an album mm -hmm. or maybe even moving forward a band, you know? Um, so I did that. So COVID really was the catalyst and in a, in a, obviously it was yeah. negative, you know, in, in a major sense. Um, but in a, in a positive spin, I know everyone, you know, used that time effectively, you know, if they could, uh, and that was the way I did it really. So I, I got it together, put some songs together, uh, and kind of focused all those ideas that I'd had kicking around for the last few years before that. So that's how it came about. And it became apparent really that it had its own identity and its own legs, and it sounded like its own thing. I didn't want right. something that sounded like Judas Priest because sure. what's the point in that? I'm, you know, that's that's what we do in Priest. There's there's no point. Right. Um, but to me, it had its own sonic identity, and uh, I pushed forward with it, and the result was uh, Elegant Weapons. Mm -hmm. And what about the? Uh, how did you come up with the name? Uh, the, the you know the the well the title for the record, and also the name for the band. I mean, obviously, it's you had to come up with something. It's always difficult coming up with names mm -hmm. um, because there's some kind of ridiculous names out there, but we associate them with the great music. And so something that might be silly mm -hmm. becomes fantastic. Right. I mean, like the, the record uh, painkiller, it's a painkiller. Right. It's a, but like, if you think of it in those terms, it's right. kind of silly, but we associate yeah. it with one of the greatest heavy metal records of all time. So it takes on a different meaning. So, you, um, Elegant Weapons is a Star Wars reference, mm -hmm. um, and it refers to when Obi Wan gives Luke the lightsaber. Um, it's coming to me, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, because what happened was I was in a I was in a security line once going going through an airport, and I had a guitar with me, and I put the I put the guitar on the on the belt, you know, to go through the security line, mm -hmm. and the the lady behind the count behind the security belt said, "What's in there?" Um, and I said, it's a guitar. Yeah. So she said, what, a real one? You know, and I said, <laughs> yeah. So it, it was almost like these things are becoming antiquated. They're, they're from a, almost from a bygone era, mm -hmm. like the lightsaber. Mm -hmm. uh, people favor different things nowadays, but these, they're almost like these mythical creatures. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where the link to the lightsaber came from and the, yeah. the quote from Obi-Wan of the elegant weapons, because they are, they're elegant. Oh, and yeah. we create music on them and words can be weapons and, uh, you know, all those sort of things. So that, that's where it came from. Nice. And and this is uh, viewed more as a band, I guess, because you could have called it Richie Faulkner, you know, solo album or something. Faulkner's Priest. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I'm just referring yeah. to you yourself, this being like a solo project for yourself. Of course, it, it was never really... I mean, obviously, I'm the I'm the main catalyst behind it um, mm -hmm. in that sense. But I wanted it to be a band. I wanted it to be perceived as a band, and I didn't want it to be, a, uh, you know, just a, a creative statement on an album, mm -hmm. and that's it. I wanted it to be a living, breathing, evolving band that does shows, right. that does tours, 
that you know we've got plans for you know the next records and how we're going to evolve um in the future is an exciting one because you don't know sure. what it's going to be but the fundamentally it was a band that wasn't a solo project it was a band of people that create uh you know their own sound as a collective mm -hmm. um and and again those shows and gigs and tours and right. all those things that bands do so who came on board first? Because I know you're working with Ronnie Romero, and gosh, she's worked with everybody. I mean, I, I've, I've known of the guy for a bit, but all of a sudden he gets these high-profile type gigs with with some of these bands of Blackmore and Shanker. I mean, probably guys you look up to. Absolutely. I mean, I was fortunate enough to have uh, Rex Brown and Scott Travis on the record, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but obviously for a touring band and as part of the band going forward, um, Rex obviously has this band called Rec, uh, called Pantera, and Cal I think Ray. they're going to do quite well, you know. Sure, sure. Um, and Scott couldn't do the couldn't wasn't able to do the the live dates. Um, Ronnie obviously was on board around that same time I was putting the record down. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean Ronnie, Ronnie is a, a relatively new vocalist, but he's got a classic, quote unquote, classic mm -hmm. soul and sound about him, right. which you know connects me to the music that i want to make and that i got brought up with you know mm -hmm. uh rainbow uh, black sabbath dio uh priest maiden it's that it's that classic right. dna that ronnie's got that you know I, i'm i'm not hiding it, the fact that i'm a child of the 80s and the 90s and that's the music that comes out you know mm -hmm. um and i'm proud of that uh i don't want to kind of make anything that's purposely modern for the sake of it this is who i am as a guitar player and a musician this is who we are right. and that's we're all in legacy bands and i think those the dna from those legacy bands come forward and hopefully create something new moving on into the future right yeah i mean it's pretty uh i like what you did with this record i mean i've heard the whole thing uh pretty versatile i mean you got modern stuff modern rock you know i, I i'm i'm leaning more towards at the moment towards the doomy stuff because of you know ronnie uh you know, performing that, that for some reason that really suits him well. I mean, everything he does sounds great, but I'm leaning more towards the doomier stuff, like the uh, bitter, bitter pill and the dirty pig. You know, I mean, th those are the ones I keep going back to. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, when you make a, a musical statement like this, it's coming from who we are in our past mm -hmm. and hopefully creates a new identity moving forward. Right. But in, until that happens, we have to kind of, you know, you become the band as you move forward. Um, and I definitely think those doomier, bluesier elements yeah. of the band um, are going to push forward as we move along. You know, the, the the foundation for the second record has been written and we started oh, wow. to record it. And yeah. um, so there's there are those elements that you just mentioned. Right. To me, it sounds like early priest, you know, the bluesy right. elements of early right. priest or Sabbath. Sure. Um, they're definitely they seem to be pushing forward as we evolve creatively. So, uh, but then you've got the, the more metal elements in there and um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's one ballad in there. Right. You know, so, uh, so it's, it's a quite a diverse collective of songs, but yeah, as you said, moving forward, we'll, we'll see what that sound evolves into. Did you have any second thoughts about uh, squeezing a, a ballad in there just because of, you know, some of the stuff that's in there. I mean, there's some pretty heavy, stuff in there you know, crunchy doomy riffs and then you insert that ballad in there i mean uh was that was that something that you had any second thoughts about it or you just thought it felt it felt uh good within the sequencing of that record yeah i didn't have any doubts about that one whatsoever um it was to me it was a unique sounding tune um mm -hmm. and it was a no-brainer i wanted something again that i said earlier on that stood on its own two legs Right. Uh, and it might be a little bit out of place on a metal record, mm -hmm. um, which is why it was appropriate to do it on this one. You know, it was a bit different. Um, it's almost like a waltz, you know. Right. Um, so it was different enough and unique enough, but I think powerful enough to be uh, to be considered for the record. So, yeah, it, it was always uh, there, there was never any uh, doubt whatsoever that that one was going to be on the record. That's one of my favorite tracks, to be honest. Nice. Uh, you you mentioned the foundation for the next records already kind of in in progress or, or been uh, laid down and stuff like that. I mean, I imagine it's going to be now the the current 
folks that are uh, would be performing live that are going to be fe featured on the record? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. as we I keep saying the word evolve, but as the band evolves, mm -hmm. you come together and you kind of something that was already its own character then be takes on even more of its own character as right. the band evolves and comes together. So uh, it will be it will be silly really not to use the guys mm -hmm. that are in the band. Um, you know, it's working. We we just done a couple of live um, shoots, okay. uh, you know, videos and, and recordings, um, and it's it. It's it's but fundamentally it's a three piece band with a singer, you yeah, know. So it's right. like that classic band of gypsies mm -hmm. uh, sort of three piece lineup, and it can move and push and pull, and we can extend certain things if if you know that sort of thing. It's a very mm -hmm. simple setup for a band. Um, there's not a lot of moving parts. There's not like you know three guitar players or a keyboard player and a group of singers. It's it's four guys right. playing you know, um, rock music. Um, so it's working. So why, why change that? They're, those guys are definitely going to be a part of, you know, moving forward now and then capturing that energy as we move forward in the studio. Sure. Uh, how, how was it for you being like, I know you just brought up, uh, that was one of the things I had on my list to ask you was, was how it is for you to be kind of the single guitar player in a band for a change. I know after going, you know, for years now being part of priest and, and working alongside another, another guitarist, you know, shifting gears and going back to being the single guy, single guitarist in a band. How, how is that? It's, it's pretty, definitely, pretty um, yeah. It's definitely uh it's definitely different mm -hmm. um because when you when you move up to do some solo bits and pieces or some different colors here and there right. it, it leaves the space you know um but that works that, that's kind of part of the element of a of a three piece band you know you mm -hmm. when you move up to do different things and it does make you think differently about what you're playing and what space you're filling and you need to fill those spaces. Uh, as well as doing the, you know, the lead guitar bits as well. Um, I mean, I'm not adverse to in the future, you know, adding, there's, there's some Hammond organ on the on the record mm -hmm. in places. I wouldn't yeah. be adverse to, you know, adding that live, um, you know, or another rhythm guitar player. If it mm -hmm. starts to to suffer musically, then we, I think we would consider those uh, opportunities. But at the moment, it's sounding great. Right. Um, but I wouldn't be adverse to you know, something like that in the future. Nice. Okay. Um, real quick, I'll, I'll ask you a few things priest related. Is there a particular song that's a deeper track that you'd like to see in the priest set? That's a good question. I mean, we, over the last few years and on the firepower tour, mm -hmm. we did kind of reach into that. We did a few, like, for yeah. example, we did three legs in the U S on the firepower. tour. so we went back and brought out some of those deep cuts. So as a fan, I've been really fortunate to be able to go back into the catalog yeah. uh, and bring out some of those, you know, like uh, Killing Machine, Out in the Cold, right. uh, Saints in Hell, stuff like that, you know. Um, so we've done a lot of them. I mean, as, as we, you know, look to the future for what we're going to do on the next tour, mm -hmm. it's going to be a real challenge uh, yeah. as to what we're going to do, what we're going to pull out. Uh, of the the back catalogue that hasn't been done for a while, you know we've done quite a lot of them, um, you know. So I would like to do Reckless. I've always wanted to do Re again. I'm a child of the '80s, so mm -hmm. um, you know the Reckless from uh, the Turbo record was one of my favourites. We actually <laughs> rehearsed that. Um, I think it was before. I can't remember if it was before that. I think it was before the 50th anniversary tour. We, mm -hmm. we rehearsed Reckless. Uh, but it was one of the ones that fell by the wayside, didn't make the live right. live set. But maybe we can try that again. I, I'm going to say reckless. Man, I really am digging the the um, Turbo record. I mean, I've always been a fan of it, but going back and revisiting it, you know, I mean, it's different. But there's a lot of great stuff on there. One of them being out in the cold, like you said, that's a that's a fantastic tune, I think. But uh, um, absolutely one of, one of the things that's kind of funny here is I saw Priest on that tour, and they had Dokken opening which you know ah. there's a there's a lynch relation there between yourself and george lynch and stuff has there ever been any talk of you uh working with george as far as doing anything musically or anything like that yeah of course it, it gets brought up you know george is a is a heavyweight in in guitar uh and rock music you know so and now there's the the, the 
the personal uh, connection that I have with him. So, yeah, it gets brought up a lot, you know. George is really busy as well. He, he's always got, like, his, his fingers in different mm -hmm. pyres and he's doing different... Uh, I think he's doing an industrial project at the moment. Yeah, he that's a KXM. pretty good record, too. Great, yeah. Um, KXM, uh, obviously, uh, the Lynch Mob stuff, and he does stuff. He gets mm -hmm. up with Doc on, on some live shows. So he's, he's like, he's working hard. So yeah. I'm not sure there'll be any time to do that but it will be interesting i mean i actually you know i think george is a really unique guitar player right um he's um in the same sense as glenn tipton is you you can you can hear when glenn's playing uh because of those little unorthodox turnarounds right. and stuff that he does and george is the same kind of player you know he's 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 from that era of guitar players but um to me he was always something a cut above Mm -hmm. the the rest of the guitar players right. there, there, there was a few of them you know there was like you know randy rhodes and steve Vyer, george lynch you know that they were the they were uh, some of the most influential guitar players of that period and still mm -hmm. still are right. um so but maybe, maybe one day we'll do something um yeah you know. and, uh, that would that would be that'd be kind of cool to hear actually you know just to hear the contrast between the way you, you perform and the way you know the, some of the stuff he does although he's done some pretty bluesy sounding stuff too that'd be kind of cool to see how you guys could could make that work that's a great idea yeah i know george is a big fan of the blues mm -hmm. um and loves to do a lot of a lot of blues material um so yeah again it's something that I don't rule out in the future. Yeah. It's just, you know, getting it together and seeing sure. if something works. How, how is it, how was it for yourself to perform with KK at the, at the induction uh, rock and roll hall of fame? Cause it, again, you're, you're a huge priest fan. You stepped into, into a role, you know, when, when, you know, you probably, it was probably pretty tough, you know, stepping in for somebody that's no longer in the band that you looked up to and stuff. And now here you're on, here you are on stage, sharing the stage and performing a tune with the guy. I mean, first of all, just to be, up there with them mm -hmm. i mean priest has always been a two guitar band you right. know so to be up there as part of judas priest as a three guitar band right. uh maybe for the only time ever you know it was yeah. an incredible uh honor you know uh but playing with ken was great he was cool uh, you know i've got no problem with ken uh so we we got on well we played well together we performed well together we looked great together yeah you know, a couple of flying v's and blonde hair right. you know um and it, it was great. I had a great time. Uh, also, Les Binks was there as well, who mm -hmm. uh, I've played with in the, in the past in cover bands in England. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, having Glenn and Ken as part of my influences uh, historically uh, and only play, only having played with Glenn up to this point, to play with Ken as well was, uh, you know, just a, a little notch, you know what I mean? Like, a, what's right. the word? Right, uh, you know, a little accomplishment there, and, sure. and again, to be part of a, a free guitar attack with Priest was wicked. Yeah, that would be like Maiden and and Skinnerd, the triple guitar attack, right? I mean, that's awesome. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it was a it was a great day, and to see obviously all those celebrities. I mean, I call them celebrities. That I mean, these icons really right. of music, like Pat Benatar, mm -hmm. Neil Gerardo, The Edge was there, Lionel Richie was there, Duran Duran was there. Uh, you know, Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart. I mean, yeah. iconic sure. musicians. Uh, it was just uh, incredibly humbling to be a part of. Nice. Well, what about Andy Sneap? I mean, what does he bring to the table? Because he's been touring with you guys for a bit and producing records and stuff like that. And he, he seems, I mean, love seeing him on stage too. I mean, he's become kind of a staple there. He kind of does his thing, you know, kind of hangs back a little bit. But, you know, he's definitely uh, an essential part of the band at this point. Yeah, I mean, Andy, um, I, mean, I think he'd tell you the same thing. You know, he had a bit of a challenge on his hands in the beginning, mm -hmm. um, as anyone does, as I did, you know, uh, joining the band. Uh, and then Andy, you know, covering Glenn's slot on the live scenario, that's that's not a that's not a light thing to take on board, you know. Right. Um, but, yeah, he's doing great now. And me and Andy are always kind of looking at, you know, what you mentioned earlier on, what, deep cuts can we bring out of the back catalog because we're both priest fans so right. we often have conversations about um you know what new stuff we can bring out from the past uh and also as a, as a producer you know as a fan as well he really wants to get the best out of priest in the studio as well 
-hmm. So we're always, I think I talk to Andy or text Andy every day for the last however many years we've been working together. Right. It's right. always, you know, elegant weapon stuff or guitar stuff or priest stuff or, you know, recording stuff. I, I talk to him every day, you know, so he's dedicated. Right. He lives and breathes what he does. And uh, so when he, he got asked to fill in for Glenn with priest, he, he'd done that with the same amount of enthusiasm. Right. So uh, it's great to have him up there. Oh. And, and most importantly, I mean, how, how's, how's the health these days and, uh, you know, uh, any continuing challenges? The health's great. I mean, I had to go in again last August and um, be opened up again and they had to fix mm. a couple of problems. But ever since then, I, I've been okay, really. Um, as some people have said, like my other half, for example, she, sure. I, I think I went down in September, I think it was, um, and I was back out on the road in March. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, I went down under the knife again in August. Uh, and we had two months off and I was back out on the road again. So, but like, so some people might say it's a bit too soon, but right. the, the touring and the record, you know, we've been writing the priest record and the elegant weapons record and everything that comes along with, uh, you know, interviews and artwork and photos mm -hmm. and video shoots and stuff, all the stuff that comes along with that, it serves as a, a focus for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you never know what's around the corner um mm. so you know if you've got something to say and stuff to do do it you know because right. you know in my case it could have been all over yeah um that day so i've got i've got another chance yeah um so all all of this stuff kind of serves as a, a focus and a motivator uh to get it done and do it to the best of your ability and uh and push on so but my health's great i really appreciate you asking yeah um, we're glad i mean uh, yeah. Again, you know, I think when when that the the health event happened and then uh, that tour got, you know, pushed back, I was like, well, I hope it happens. But if it doesn't, I mean, we can always wait. But yeah, you're right. You powered through and came back and we saw the show and it's like, wow, how is this possible? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, people have different um, they have different uh, reactions to that kind of. Mm -hmm. event um some people were out of action for a couple of years and sure. you know some people are out of, you know whatever but i don't know i was lucky really I, i'm relatively healthy i don't smoke i don't drink too much um mm -hmm. anything like that so mm -hmm. you know as i said relatively young so i was able right. to bounce back and i think as soon as i could i put the guitar back in my hands and started to play again and right. as i said i called management and said i want to get back on with the record and finish the record and you know it just uh, served as I said, as a motivating force to get back on the guitar or get creating or get a record out or whatever it may be just to push forward. Right. Yeah. Cause I remember you put out a video on one of your social media pages and I think you played for some ridiculous amount of time or something like that. Right. I mean, didn't you play for like a couple hours and I was like, how's this possible? You know? Yeah. Was... I used to do like um, an Instagram live type yeah. scenario, yeah, with, right. you know? So yeah. And it, it really helped. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of um, lovely messages from fans and uh, they knew kind of what the situation was and they right. sent me their, their messages and they got on, on the uh, social media uh, live feed and stuff and mm -hmm. they'd say what songs they want to hear and I'd try and play them. And it, it, it all kind of helped to help me get through it, build a bit of dexterity, build some right. stamina while having fun with the fans at the same time. So I can only like, thank them as well. It's like, it's like uh, the, when, uh, when I saw that, I was like, it's almost like uh, metal, metal physical therapy or something, you know? It really is. I mean, we joke about it, but uh, it, it definitely worked. It, it mm -hmm. helped, you know, it gets yeah. your head back in gear. It gets your dexterity up and whatever. So it, yeah, I, I really was that. Wow. Amazing. Uh, real quick, I was going to ask you, you did a, uh, during the pandemic again, uh, you know, I think you, you did a uh, live stream with Damon Johnson. What was that like? I, I saw that it was, it looked like a blast. It really was again, super grateful and fortunate to be asked by Damon to do it. Uh, and it was during that time when no one was doing anything mm -hmm. of that nature, yeah. you know, uh, live, I mean like proper live shows. So we got to the point where we could do it set up in a room and play together um it was weird because there was no there was no crowd right. it was just right. us so uh, every time you finished a song it was like deathly right. silence Dead you know? silence yeah but it was great fantastic songs you know thin lizzy stuff and yeah you know from a oh. guitar point of view you've got you know 
Scott Gorham, Brian Robertson, Gary Moore, John Sykes, you know, um, to name a few of them. Uh, but just it was it was great to do at that time as well because we didn't we hadn't really done anything like that for a while. Right. Yeah. Well, you got me. You got me thinking of my playlist for the day. Some more elegant weapons. Some Lizzie. Some deeper Judas Priest. Probably some Turbo. So you know, and probably Brilliant. some George Lynch stuff. So I mean, there's going to be a mix of stuff today, I think. But uh, right. uh, just got uh, one more question, and then I'll cut you loose. Thank you for your time. It's it's been a pleasure. Um, so the one thing I'd ask you is last question. You know, what is something about Richie Faulkner that we wouldn't know unless you told us? like a factoid of some sort? Um, well, I'm not sure that nobody knows this, but I'm a, you know, again, I'm a child of the 80s, and I think I mentioned to you earlier on, I'm into, you know, Roxy Music and mm -hmm. Brian mm -hmm. Adams and, um, as I said, Ultravox and The Police, you know, so that that kind of 80s uh, synthwave type okay. stuff, uh, which I don't think many people would know. Um uh, not that you know. I'm gonna. There's a. There's that much of. A, there's not a synthwave influence on on this record, right. you know. Right. But right. um, but maybe indirectly there is. I mean, it's great songwriting back in the day. You know, bands mm -hmm. like Duran Duran and right. fantastic, fantastic songwriting. So maybe they wouldn't know that. I'm a. I'm a big child of the '80s and love that style of music. Fantastic. Hey man, we're gonna plug all the stuff all your socials the record you know anything else uh richie faulkner related and we'll get uh we'll get chipster the link and we thank you for your time and hope to see you either performing live with uh, elegant weapons or priests down the way so there's going to be more of that so uh thanks for your time and uh we'll talk soon i hope it's a pleasure ruben thanks for the support man and right. uh, hopefully see you soon yep thank you take care see have you, a man. good rest of the day you too, man. Bye-bye now. Bye.